I'm going to talk about the respiratory system, which functions to keep the body supplied with oxygen and to remove carbon dioxide from it. The respiratory system is separated into the upper airway and the lower airway. It consists of the nasal cavity, the pharynx, which is composed of different parts, the larynx, aka the voice box, the trachea, aka the windpipe, bronchial tubes, and the lungs, which are paired organs. I'm going to talk about some associated structures and functions. This is the trachea. The opening to the trachea is called the glottis which is covered by the epiglottis. The epiglottis is a leaf-shaped structure which functions to prevent material from going down the trachea, from entering the trachea. The bronchial tubes which branch out into the lungs are lined by cilia. Cilia is like tiny little hairs which increase the surface area and also move things along, move substances and debris along. At the end of the bronchial tubes are tiny air sacs called alveoli. The alveoli allow gas exchange, so gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide, with the bloodstream. So the alveoli are tiny air sacs at the end of the bronchial tubes which allow gas exchange with the bloodstream. The diaphragm is part of a different body system but it has functions in this one. It is a dome shaped muscle that helps facilitate inhalation slash inspiration. It means the same thing, so you might hear somebody say inhalation or inspiration, which is an active process. The diaphragm and intercostals contract and expand the chest cavity. And exhalation slash expiration, again, they mean the same thing which is a passive process in which the diaphragm and intercostal muscles relax. So the diaphragm helps facilitate these movements and these processes. The medulla oblongata and the pons contain respiratory control centers. So they're involved in controlling respiration. Now I'm going to go over ventilation and perfusion. Ventilation is the process of moving gases between the inhaled air and pulmonary circulation. And perfusion is the supply of oxygen and removal of waste from the body's cells and tissues, which is facilitated by the blood flow through the capillaries. So you can think of ventilation as supplying the oxygen and perfusion as distributing it. The VQ match, ventilation perfusion match, 
is when the alveoli, the tiny air sacs, are supplied with enough air and that air is matched with enough blood in the pulmonary capillaries. A mismatch may lead to hypoperfusion. Hypoperfusion, aka shock, is the inadequate supply of oxygen and removal of waste from the body's cells and tissues. Respiration, there's pulmonary respiration, which is moving gases between circulating blood and the alveoli. Cellular respiration moves the gases between the circulating blood and the cells. I'm going to draw a very generic drawing here. You're supposed to be the bronchial tubes with the alveoli lined by capillaries. And I'm going to show the direction of exchange. This is a erythrocyte, aka red blood cell. And red blood cells have hemoglobin, which is what the oxygen binds to. And the hemoglobin is what transports the oxygen. From the alveoli to the red blood cell, oxygen is given. And from the red blood cell to the alveoli, carbon dioxide is given. And this concludes this video on the respiratory system.